All right, welcome back. Video two for chapter three, Interdependence and the Gains from Trade. We have been introduced to Frank and Ruby, and they live on a pioneer kind of situation like on the prairie. Um, and they do two things. They raise cattle for meat and they plant potatoes, well, for potatoes. So uh, they are compensated with calories um, from the meat and potatoes. And so the amount of ounces that they produce daily determines their standard of living. Uh, going back to that principle of economics that the more productive you are, the higher your standard of living. So let's get started. Uh, we left off video one with a narrative from Ruby who was proposing to Frank that they could trade and be more productive and have more meat and potatoes to eat. So let's recap kind of what she proposed. She said that, Frank, uh, instead of splitting your time between meat and potatoes and making four ounces of meat, because if he worked all day, all eight hours is what they can work, he'd make eight ounces of meat, and if he worked all eight hours on potatoes, he'd make 32 ounces of potatoes. So before trade, he was naturally drawn to make a little bit of both, because people want meat and potatoes, and so he did four hours of meat, four hours of potatoes each day, and he came away with four ounces of meat and 16 ounces of potatoes. Now, Ruby proposed that he stop raising cattle altogether. Um, so that shifted his productivity from four hours and four ounces a day down to zero ounces of meat and all eight hours over on potatoes. So he went, his production went from 16 ounces of potatoes a, a day um, at four hours a day to 32 ounces of potatoes a day at eight hours a day. Now, Ruby said, in return, I'm pretty good at raising cattle, but I'm also really you know, decent at growing potatoes too, because she had an absolute advantage in both. Uh, if you didn't watch the first video, definitely need to go back and watch it. Um, Ruby, who, if she spent all day making meat and no time making potatoes, she could make 24 ounces. If she spent all day making potatoes and no time making meat, she could make 48 ounces. So she has an absolute advantage over Frank. Um, so what she does before trade, it says, you know what, I'm going to make some meat and potatoes. She divides her time evenly, and in four hours, she can make 12 ounces of meat. And in four hours, so four plus four, eight hours, of making potatoes, she can make 24 ounces of meat. Here's what she proposed. She says, listen, Frank, I'm better than you at making meat. Um, and I'm pretty good at making potatoes. So here's what I'm going to do. I figured it up. Um, I am going to uh, produce at a rate of six hours on meat and two hours on potatoes. Okay, so I'm gonna go six and two, you're gonna go zero and eight and focus on potatoes. She's asking him to specialize in potatoes. Um, Ruby then um, moves from her four and four, 12 and 24, to six hours of meat, two hours of potatoes, that shifts her PPF inward in terms of potatoes because she's not spending four hours on potatoes, she's only spending two hours on potatoes. Um, she goes from 24 ounces of potatoes at 4 hours to 12 ounces of potatoes in 2 hours. Conversely, she was doing 4 and 4, 4 hours of meat. She was producing 12 ounces of meat. Now she's saying, I'm going to go 6 hours. It's not quite my max of 24, but I'm going to make 18 ounces of meat a day. And then you and I are going to trade. And then in this table behind me, which is figure 2 in chapter 3, I'm going to walk you through it. Definitely do the reading. Um, I'm going to see how this plays out for them and whether trade does make them better off. A few reminders here, though. Um, without trade, what they produced is what they also consumed. So production and consumption are the same thing. Frank spent his time evenly, again, between meat and potatoes, and he consumed 4 ounces of meat and 16 ounces of potatoes. Ruby, before trade, again, spent her time four hours meat, four hours potatoes, and consumed 12 and 24, which we just covered. Um, that was set up in the first video and in figure one you're reading. With trade, what Ruby's proposing is that meat, is that Frank specialize in meat, in, or excuse me, Frank specialize in potatoes all eight hours and do zero meat. So he would produce, and now we see we break out production, trade, and consumption, we, he would produce zero ounces of meat, and he would maximize his time on potatoes and make 32 ounces in eight hours. Ruby then, having absolute advantage of both, but being a little better at making cattle, and we'll talk about that here in a second, uh, maybe in the next video, we'll see. Um, six hours on meat, 
two hours on potatoes, she ends up with 18 ounces and 12 ounces. How did I come up with that? Well, hopefully you've watched the first video, but even so, it's, it helps to have it right there. If you recall from the first video, Ruby can make three ounces of meat per hour, okay? She could do, every 20 minutes, she can make an ounce of meat. Um, in six hours, if she goes with six hours, times those three ounces per hour, she can make 18 ounces. That's how we got this number. Ruby can make, then, six ounces of potatoes per hour. Every 10 minutes, she can make an ounce of potatoes. So she was really good at that. She has absolute advantage. Um, if she spends two hours and can make six ounces per hour, so two hours times six ounces per hour, she makes 12 ounces of potatoes. That's how we got that number. How does this play out? How does this play out? Well, if we do this production under this proposal, Frank's zero meat, all potatoes, so zero and 32 ounces. Ruby is six hours on meat. She makes 18 ounces of meat and two hours on potatoes because she's pretty doggone good at it. She makes 12 ounces of potatoes. So that's how they break down. That's how productive they are. Then Ruby came in and realized that she had something that she could trade with Frank. Even though he, she has absolute advantage, she had a comparative advantage in making meat, and he actually has a comparative advantage in making potatoes. That's why she asked him to specialize in that. Um, what she proposed, and we'll get to that in the next video, what she proposed was, you know what, Frank? You're not producing any meat because I've asked you to do all potatoes. I would like for you to send me 15 ounces of the potatoes you produce, that leaves you with 17 ounces of the potatoes, and in return, I'll send you five ounces of meat. Now, let's, let's look at this. If you compare this number to that number, what do you see? Well, by doing the trade, Frank gets one more ounce of meat. He's better off. Now, by specializing in potatoes and trading with Ruby, he makes 32 ounces but sends 15 ounces of potatoes to Ruby for the 5 ounces of meat. So they're trading. He ends up with 17 ounces of potatoes, which you compare to what he did, what he produced and consumed before trade, and he is made better off by one ounce. So trade has made him better off. And again, we're measuring this in terms of productivity, calories taken in. Um, he's better off. Frank is better off by trade. What about Ruby? Ruby, again, is going to send Frank five ounces of meat. She's producing 18 ounces of meat because she's spending six hours doing it. Okay? So 18 minus five leaves her with 13 ounces of meat. Compare that to what she was eating before, which was 12 ounces, and she is better off by one ounce. She's better off. Trade's made her better off in terms of meat. What about potatoes? In potato production, she is going to send five ounces of meat over here, but receive 15 ounces of potatoes from Frank. That's the trade. That's the term of the trade. So she will end up with 27 ounces of potatoes to consume versus before trade only having 24. She is made better off by three ounces of meat. So she really wins. In each scenario, Frank, with each item, and Ruby are made better off by trade. Now, sometimes I get the question in classes like, well, why did Ruby not send him more potatoes because she ended up plus three? Well, that's a little socialist bit of a question there. But let me stop right there. Who had the idea, if you go back to video one, whose idea was it to trade? It was Ruby's. She came to Frank. In fact, Frank was a bit skeptical. Ruby had the bright idea to trade. So when you're the one who's cutting up the pie and you're the smart one, you're going to make Frank better off. Is Frank better off? Absolutely. All right. Well, you're the one dividing up the pie. Shouldn't you get compensated for a really good idea? Yeah, that's how the economy works. She's made better off by an ounce. Okay, that's even. But tell you what, she carved out a little extra for herself just for being that clever to come up with a trade scheme that would allow everyone to benefit. So, trade can make everyone better off. But, well, to this point, all we talked about is absolute advantage. Absolute advantage is great. You're just more productive, you probably have a higher standard of living. That said, absolute advantage does not mean you should absolutely make everything. What determines what you should make is called comparative advantage. Comparative advantage. Okay? 
video three, we're going to break down how Ruby came up with this idea, and it was based on comparative advantage. Come back for video three, and we will go over what comparative advantage is and how she did it. Thank you.